Okay? So there's this thing which I like to call the sort of holy trinity uh, here of computer science. Okay? So we'll, we should keep this uh, over the side, which is I like to call the holy trinity, which is the correspondences between proof theory, which is sort of the theory of logic and proofs, uh, algebra and category theory, And then the subject in the computer science side is programs or type theory. Those are the same thing. Okay? And these all have tight correspondences. This is like why, what I tongue-in-cheek call the, uh, the doctrine of uh, computational trinitarianism, which is the, uh, the computing in three persons principle that we have that the idea of a computational concept arises as perhaps it arises as a notion of computing, but it may also arise, the same concept may also arise in algebra, and it may also arise in logic. And in fact, I would turn that the other way around and give it a more normative force and say, you don't know what you're talking about until whatever idea you come up with, till you understand it both, all three ways, as a, L, as, a mean, as a notion of computation, as a notion of proof, and as a notion of algebra or algebraic structure. If you find something that has good meaning in all three senses, you have what I would call a proper scientific discovery. Okay? At that point, you've done something which is permanent. You've really made something permanent, something uh, that will will last to eternity. You've really discovered something significant. You've got a real discovery if you dis discover some conception that makes sense from all three points of view. So the beauty of this is that uh, the way I like to think about it is it's a way of making working on these problems in a certain way meaningful or worth doing. I, you know, personally, your, your opinion may certainly vary. I find nothing more dreary than trying to chase around the recent trends of some bozo at some company who uh, is telling us that we ought to be doing some object-oriented mumbo-jumbo with something or other. Okay, this is like, I, I'm not interested in this. Okay, this is like completely unimportant to me. These are the vagaries of technology that come and go, and they're popular because some big company says they're popular, and then they're not because that big company goes out of business or whatever. It's a load of nonsense, right? So if you're interested in science, maybe you're not, but if you're interested in science, this is the scientific framework for talking about programming languages, and this is what we're doing. Now, what is the notion of a variable? Well, the notion of a variable is grossly abused in computer science. And so I'm going to insist, so this is another point in which I want to insist on uh, being careful about our terminology, uh, just as I was about provable. I want to insist that the idea of a variable that you, that thing that's called a variable in like almost any programming language that you can throw a stone at, okay, is not a variable. Okay? What is a variable is the thing you learned in school, okay? You had it right when you were like nine years old. Okay, and then somebody screwed you up. Okay, and I'm just saying you were right in the first place. But why is this important? It's important because, what is the importance of this? The importance is we can always heuristically assume that a proposition is decidable, even if we don't have a proof that it is. Because, you see, intuitionistic logic is not going to refute the decidability. Okay? That's the idea. It doesn't, if it refuted the decidability of, any, of arbitrary proposition, then if you threw in the assumption that it was, that it was uh, decidable, then automatically you're in a state of sin, and so everything is inconsistent, and it's a mess. But here what we can do is we can make assumptions. We can say, well, suppose we consider that equality on the real numbers uh, let's say inequality on the real numbers is decidable. Then we can describe, for example, Newton's method for finding roots of a function by a kind of binary search procedure that requires knowing, okay, where are we relative to the x-axis, let us say. You can't actually do that. That's bogus, okay? It's not true, okay? But intuitionistic logic doesn't, doesn't refute it. So I can throw in that assumption and then act as though it were true. So in other words, the apparent limitation, so this is something that poor Brower, they could never, uh, that poor Brower uh, could never get across to anyone. The apparent limitations 
of IL, intuition ethic logic, are the very source of its strength. And it's, it's strength and it's expressive power. It's strength and expressiveness. You see, it's just pure loss if you impose the blanket assumption that everything is decidable because you now are unable to draw the distinction between scenarios in which things are decidable and which they're not. Everything has been forced on you, okay, so you can't draw the distinction. Whereas with intuitionistic logic, I can selectively uh, introduce decidability assumptions according to my preference in a particular situation. Maybe I wish to discuss Newton's method and it's a, it's a nice algorithm, but for the fact that you can't compare uh, real numbers for inequality. Okay, so it's a it's a sensible thing to entertain. Whereas if you you know insist on that holding as a matter of pure logic, then you're 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 out of the game. You can't you can't even play this game. There are many implications of this point, and in fact, when we get to the end, some combination of me and Steve and others will talk about recent advances in type theory uh, that I alluded to earlier that are entirely possible exactly for this reason, okay? The only reason it works, the reason it's such a beautiful way to go is exactly because of this and related concepts, this idea. Okay, so I think that's a really critical idea to get across. So it's a good thing, okay, to be working with a Heiting algebra and not a Boolean algebra. So what this is saying is that it's one of these things that uh, uh, has the flavor of, uh, you know, puts me in an awkward position as a teacher it has a flavor of, I have to say to you, in all honesty, everything you know is wrong. Okay? You have to start over. So everybody told you all this story about Boolean algebras. Just forget it. Okay? It was a mistake. Okay? They led you down the wrong. They're good meaning people, but they led you down the wrong, they led you down the wrong path. Okay? So there's a certain amount of undo that has to happen in order to understand the real theory of programming languages and how it all how it all works. And so, and this is one of them, is getting, getting used to this like core idea. Once you get the idea and start playing around with it, I, as I say, before very long you'll think, oh my God, these other people are crazy. And that's true, they are. And you'll, and you'll, you'll, figure, you'll figure that out. Okay. So what people have said is that the idea of type theory is it's a theory of constructions. It's the things you can build, your little tinker toys that you can build with to do your math or equivalently, your programming. So type theory is a theory of constructions. From that point of view, logic is an application of type theory because there are particular constructions which correspond to proofs. But there are other constructions, like of the natural numbers themselves or of geometric objects, that don't correspond to proofs of particular propositions. They're just mathematical constructions. So what we're doing is we're interested in the general concept of what is a mathematical construction. Okay, and that's where, the, uh, that's where the terminology calculus of constructions comes from, by the way. Okay, this is the origin. And in fact, uh, that's why intuitionistic logic is sometimes called constructive logic, or the doctrine is sometimes called constructivism, because Brouwer emphasized the idea of a construction in the sense oh. I'm describing. And in fact, Brouwer's dictum is the uh, idea, the principle that mathematics, rather than mathematics being sort of a further development of logic, that is mathematics builds on logic, that it's the other way around, that logic is just a particular corner of mathematics. And I would say, from a modern perspective, actually it's just a particular corner of computer science because math itself is just a corner of computer science. <laughs> okay? No, that's the idea. Because computer science is based on the idea of constructions in computing and Brouwer's point was you can build all of mathematics on the idea of construction, which is the idea of computer program. So really, it's all computer science, okay? Computer science is the, the, the queen of sciences, if you ask me, <laughs> okay? It used to be people thought it was math, but it's not, okay? It's actually computer science. 